organize itself somewhat and get out of its box mentality and actually look at problems as they really are, not as the organizations within the CGR might like to define them. And the second is that it's an opportunity to address new problems, new development issues that are really facing us. And this, uh, this SRP, the Triple R SRP, is a fantastic opportunity to do that and really show us the way. So here we have uh, 14 centers plus uh, FAO, all engaged in this research program. At the moment, as Colin mentioned, we're really in a, in a big soup. Uh, everything is actually being churned around. We're not too sure how things are working right now. Something will happen, I can assure you of that. <laughs> but it's pretty exciting while I'm trying to get there. Why are we here? Why is this uh, CRP actually engaged in this? Well, our planet is under huge pressure. Uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a big conference in London looking at planning under pressure. A fantastic uh, range of evidence there proving the, the sort of serious pressures that we're under. Some images of that, Latin America, uh, population increases over 10 years only. Uh, Central America and the Andean countries, that's pretty serious. It pales in comparison to the pressures that's on East Africa, around the Great Lakes, in Ethiopia, and in the Nile Delta. In West Africa, major problems here on the coast and also in the Sahel. These are 10-year actual increases in population certain areas are pretty, really quite serious. All of those really are quite minor compared to what's happening in South Asia and in the Mekong Delta and parts of East Asia. The general story here, continuing fairly dramatic increase in population. What does that mean? Well, this is just for Southeast Asia, but these graphs occur to virtually all areas. Major reduction in land and water availability. The general ecosystem resource is finite and in places is really being pushed beyond its limit. In some areas they've got this more or less under control, but in many areas we're still seeing a continued major reduction in ecosystem availability. So in summary, we've got many more people, increases still increase still still going on. China has got a control of it, but India is still going up. African nations are still witnessing dramatic increases in population. That means a much greater demand for all resources, not just food, water, energy, everything that ecosystems provide. Obviously, the level of ecosystem resources is limited, and in some areas it's extremely limited locally, so there's a major problem. We see generally low productivity, very low eco-efficiency. Conversion of those ecosystem services into benefits is generally very low, and that's where we leave the need for serious intensification. And the, fourth, the, the fifth point here is that we don't really know what's going to happen to these ecosystems when they come under pressure. Some of them seem able to respond and cope, seem to be able to intensify. Sometimes we see degradation. Sometimes we see serious loss of water, uh, water quality. And by and large, we have an unknown Okay, so what's our response? Well, this is where this program comes in. We're looking at ecosystems here that comprise a range of ecosystem services. Water and land are the major ones. We have a research program to support kind of intensification, but not necessarily the intensification that the CGR has used to be dealt with. So here we are. The challenge is sustainable intensification. Now, this tends to focus on farming activities, but I would say we could actually convert that a little bit more we're looking to intensify the use of ecosystems at all scales and over all regions, and while making sure that the benefits of those ecosystem services are shared more effectively, and that the risks, that is, risks of degradation, the risk of pollution, the risk of water quality, are actually managed more effectively. That is our overall target. And to do that, we have five strategic research portfolios, of which resource, reuse, and recovery is one and actually the smallest, but I'd say it's an extremely lively one, and highly strategic, which I hope to explain in a second. These, you might just want to focus on these, because these are quite well known. They will be quite well known to you. The demand for these are fairly obvious, they're fairly large, uh, but they're not as lively as this. River basins is about putting the components of the ecosystem together in river basins or landscapes, and information systems really is about supporting 
the whole change progress, process throughout the program. So here we have resource recovery and reuse. I like these uh, punchlines, creating wealth from waste, they're pretty good. Or a great evolution in wastewater management, but it's not just wastewater. this into context within the program at all. I would say this one, as Colin said, is extremely exciting. It's generating a lot of, it, a lot of interest. Many people are wondering, well, what does it really mean? Or what does it mean now? And what's it going to mean in five years' time? So I would say this is a good strategic investment. We see situations in which all populations are urbanizing. Some have actually sort of slowed down a little bit, but after an initial early expansion. But these are really the, the major worrying ones. Latin America urbanized very rapidly early on. These are the ones that you might want to focus on. And this is, these, are, these proportions are in cities of over one million. So these, these proportions here underestimate the total urbanization. This is a process that's going on, going on rapidly. We see agriculture is intensifying. This is for rice only, but you could produce similar ones for all kinds of crops. Yield against the rice production area. If you have a lot of area to actually exploit, you will tend to exploit it and come this way. So Indonesia has done this. But you can look at certain areas, and this is again in Southeast Asia, but we could produce similar graphs for different regions. You have a massive intensification here of production. Everything's intensified, depending on how many resources you've actually got available. All these are happening within a development process. Here we have a standard graph that is used by the World Bank to follow a development trajectory. Income or poverty is, is inversed against the contribution of agriculture to GDP. And if you look at these, going through the decades, all of these bubbles actually tend to move towards a standard trajectory here. These light blue circles here are African countries. The, the size of the bubble is the population. At national, these are all at national scale. Uh, here we have Latin America. It's already advanced somewhat. East Asia, South Asia. Major, major trajectories here. This is the process of development. So how does that help us understand the problem? Here we have, tend to have a grouping of Af African basins. Still, processes have somewhere to go before they really start moving. South and East Asia tends to be in this area here. Latin America and the Caribbean tends to be around here. That helps us try and define what sort of things are going on. You can see here, these are actual trajectories of different countries. Ethiopia and Burkina Faso are still around here. India and Bangladesh have made some progress towards here, particularly uh, recently in Bangladesh. This one is quite interesting. Bolivia, basically going nowhere for decades, has suddenly got itself out of, out of problems. Brazil, shot up, the, shot up the scale. Things have really taken a lift. So what that means is that developing development itself is something of a problem. Things happen. Development occurs whether or not we pontificate about it in our workshops or our programs. But it creates problems of a different kind, depending on which, which position you're at within the development trajectory. Here we tend to have problems of vulnerability, actually setting up, setting up systems, uh, enabling people to survive off resources in the face of major risks. Here the system is really taking off. We have major population pressures in these areas. Africa is entering these areas here. We have emerging industrial and urban demands. Very intense. And here we have situations in which power structures have already been established. There are lots of things going on. There is wealth generation. But here we have power differences and some threats to the sustainability of the whole system. So we have problems, but we also have an increasing capacity to actually solve these. Here we see the need for basic support and protection to get, get the system going. Here we have opportunities for a massive productivity increase to actually support those demands for intensification. And here we see an increasing investment in institutions to try and build resilience. Now the point being is that if you're actually ahead of the development process, you're in good shape. If you're behind the development pressures, you're in serious where does that fit in terms of our overall program? Our rain-fed systems here tend to be uh, in Africa. They concentrate in Africa, not just in Africa, but they tend to be here. That's where we are. The irrigation uh, SRP tends to be in this area here, where we've got push for a major expansion, major intensification of agricultural productivity. River basin. 
Systems is about organization of the whole ecosystem. And here we have Triple R is our strategic uh, research area here, Triple R, where we have particular pressures of urbanization. <coughs> we have particular pressures for intensification here, but we also have an emerging capacity to actually deal with these problems. We hope. <laughs> and this is what the target of this SRP might be. So this uh, SRP, this research area, has a special role for us in the program. And I would say it's this. We're about trying to learn new business models, new ways of actually doing things. In the CTIR, we've had 40 years of working on basic agricultural research, working in government ministries, trying to prove, provide and uh, improve crops, uh, basic building blocks for agricultural research. But this is in a different path. It is on a trajectory. And we're trying to learn new business models. I would say that whilst we look at science over here, what we're actually trying to do is fix problematic behaviors that can obstruct change. Problematic behaviors are listed for here. You can probably think of half a dozen better ones. The uncertainty here is whether or not we know what's going on. Cognitive problems, whether we actually understand what's going on. This is where we know and we understand what's going on, but we don't want to change it for whatever reason. Politics, there might be a lack of motivation for change, and here we have a lack of capacity to change. We know what it is, we know what it means, we want to change, but we simply can't. Okay? So you can think of populating this with a range of different uh, conditions that describe the behaviors, the range of institutions that actually behave in this way, the kind of instruments that you might think of to try and enable these institutions to behave differently, and then this is where we arrive at the research. What kind of science can you deliver to this situation here to actually improve the situation? Because if we can change overall behaviors, that's the international public's good that the program needs. And how are we going to do that through the business models? Well, it's basically taking all of these factors and trying to link them together in terms of real change. Now, I'm circle some of these just for examples, but that's basically what I'm looking for in this workshop, to try and understand, and you guys know much more about this process than I do, but what I want to see is how you go about actually linking the science towards the changes in behavior to actually get broad scale improvement in this particular subject area. That's very exciting. So here we go. That was a, I think that was, I don't know how many minutes that was, but uh, got through that. <laughs> so, so first of all, I'd like to thank you for attending this workshop and for teaching me some of that. You're really the first proper workshop in the, uh, in the CRP, and I'm very excited to see this happening. And I'd like you to welcome this very uncertain but exciting.